Hello and welcome to the Good News Studios. Today we have a special guest, Claire Middleton. She's come in to discuss with us today some news that's just come in, fresh, hot, off the press. I'm going to let Claire fill you in. Hi Claire, how are you doing? Oh hi, I'm really well, thank you. Um, thank you. Um, thank you so much for having me. Really appreciate it. No worries at all, Claire. It's really good to have you. Just take your time. Oh yes, thank you very much. Um, well, thanks again. I'm just so grateful, so grateful for this opportunity. It's amazing. Um, yes, yeah, so um, I'll, I'll just I'll just fill you in then. Um, really, the good news is is that photographers don't need to feel the pressure of following this trend of niching down. I think it's really uh, become a little bit overrated actually. And uh, I just wanted to talk about my experiences, if that's okay. Um, I started out as a photographer many years ago now, and I just naturally, I trained as a baby photographer and started shadowing um, my friend, John Bigglestone. At weddings, so I naturally just got good of got good at those things and and that kind of photography. And I guess because I I did a couple of jobs in this this area, it meant that my name got out there for being baby photographer and wedding photographer. And very soon I was attracting more and more of that work, and I was really enjoying it and having a great time. Um, so soon enough, I just got more and more and more of that particular work. I didn't ever niche down it as such. I didn't just put myself out there as baby and wedding photographer. I didn't restrict myself. I left my options completely open to whatever came my way. And looking back, I absolutely think that that was the right thing to do because I... I already kind of found myself, um, I'm going to use the word stuck in the niche because it, it felt that way, that I wasn't attracting any other work. And that wasn't through advertising myself, as I said, as a photographer of one kind of, of subject. So I think it's, it's, you're going to attract more of what you're putting yourself out there to do not just um, through the metadata and your advertising, but energetically as well. So I think there's a lot of emphasis on niching down in terms of um, for advertising purposes and being able to get yourself out there to a niche audience. But I think then if like what happened to me is um, as my life changed and I kind of done the wedding and baby photography for many years, I started to feel like I wanted to move on and um, I wanted to change and maybe do photography of a different subject. And I found that it was already quite difficult to get out of that niche, even though I hadn't advertised myself as that and only that. So I think we really need to bear in mind how we might feel in the future. And I'm certainly finding nowadays that I will be drawn to um, one type of subject because of the way that I'm feeling in myself. For example, um, if I'm feeling like I really need to get out there and be sociable I'm, I'm, uh, and I need some energy from other people, I'm really attracted to band photography and um, and, and that's what I'm specialising in now. And I think specialising in something is great because it just it it's something that you're particularly passionate about or particularly interested about. So specialising in something, I think, is a really good idea. And I think that it it's um, a good compromise between just taking on any anything and actually niching down but to specialize is something in the middle and I think that that really works for me because as I say I'm always attracted to um, band photography and being in that environment but then again 
if you just keep doing that over and over again, I feel like it could get a little bit samey. Maybe you're not being challenged in that area. And therefore it's then good to take something else on, um, a completely different type of photography to just give that a little bit of breathing space. Obviously as well, the seasons um, make a difference as to what's, what's about, what's gonna come in at different times of the year and what you're gonna be feeling like doing. Um, so, so I feel to keep your options open in terms of what you're going to take on as a photographer is really, really important. Also, it's what fits in with your life at the time as well. So you might find that your inner circle of friends or um, perhaps your children or your partner is around a lot of people that you can get your name out in a certain area but then again situations change you know so I would say there's big benefits to not niching down and just keeping your options open and there and therefore being able to flow a little bit more if your energy changes and if what you want to try different things changes I think if you niche down as well you you could put potentially really good clients off because they want you to do some, they're interested in you as a person, they love your energy, they want to work with you, you connect well with them and you'd love to work with them but then they see that your niche in photography is not what they want you to do. I think that that could be off-putting for certain clients and uh, it's who you work with is you know a massive part of your enjoyment I feel of your job so I don't think that you I don't think it's a good idea to, personally to um, potentially jeopardise that expansion. I think um, there are some pros to niching down and that is um, to do with the like a certain style of advertising. Um, so if you're doing one kind of photography um, it, can't, it might be easier to be found if it's something a little bit unusual, a little bit, a little bit unique. And so it's probably in terms of advertising, it might be easier to advertise. So perhaps for getting your name out there, potentially niching down could be really beneficial. And also, I think if you're if you if you're focusing on one kind of photography you can you can buy the equipment that is going to be best for that kind of photography and you don't then have to cater for all types of photography and make sure that you have the equipment for everything like my friend Lee Hodges he has bought all the equipment for wildlife photography his thing is is wildlife photography that's what he set out to do so he's just bought the equipment for that one kind of photography which has allowed him to get the best equipment that he can afford for wildlife photography so in terms of equipment um, it's going to cost a lot more to cater for everything that you might be asked to do and so to start out on your journey as a photographer specialising in one thing and then allowing yourself that space to branch out and expand as you move forward and, and increase your equipment according to what else you're doing, I think is a really good idea. I just, I just, it doesn't, just doesn't sit right with me to just um, call yourself one thing, just knowing how I've changed so dramatically in what I want to do um, and how people are still all these years later coming to me for wedding photography and baby photography and I hate turning down work but it's just not I just I, I just need a change so knowing the impact of that I just I think I would urge people to really think carefully before they go all in niche down and, and make all their advertising geared towards one thing. Well, thank you so much, Claire. You've been um, a real inspiration today, and I'm sure a lot of photographers will be very grateful for your opinion on this um, with your experience in the field.
Thank you, thank you, thank you. So thank you very much for watching today. Until next time, you've been watching some good news for a change. Oh, oh, hi. Um, yeah, thank you so much for having me. No. Oh, hi. Oh, hi. I'm really well, thank you. Um, thank you. Um, thank you so much for having me. Really appreciate it. Thank you.